Hello, fellow guardians. Where should I start? You know how everybody has a bucket list in life of things they would love to do at some point, and there may be some things that you think you'll never be able to do. I got flown out to Bungie. You know, it was definitely a dream come true, something I just never thought would happen, and I feel super honored and thankful to the entire Destiny 2 team for literally allowing me to show you guys some content that is coming up in Episode 2, Revenant. I got to meet some of the most amazing and talented people on this earth, and I cannot thank you all enough for watching and supporting the channels as much as you do on a daily basis. So to be more specific, I will be showing you guys content that is coming up in Episode 2, Act 1. And if you guys wanted a little bit of a hint, the temperature is freezing. Please be advised that in this video there will be no story spoiled, however, I will be talking about and showing you the exotic and seasonal armor, weapons and activities, a sneak peek into potion crafting, and the next artifact. And before I start, remember that the content I will be showing you is a preview and subject to change. So let's talk about the seasonal weapons. When the episode launches, it is going to be in October, which means spooky month. And you cannot tell me that these weapons do not look like they have a vampire-like theme to them. Like, come on, look at some of these, they look pretty freaking awesome. I'm going to cover 5 legendary weapons, 1 exotic, and 3 repriced weapons coming back to the game. The origin trait on all 5 of the legendary weapons is actually pretty massive. It is called Dark Aether Reaper, and kills with this weapon periodically spawn Dark Aether Charges. Charges can be detonated early with weapons fire, or by coming into contact with them. Doing so refills the weapons from reserves. Without even giving it a try, I thought it already sounded pretty fun. So I'm going to point out the word periodically. Just because you're getting kills, it will not spawn every single time. It is going to be spawning here and there. And as you can see me giving it a try, you can see I get a kill and then there is this void orb that just floats around. So I can either decide to shoot it when enemies are close by, or just let enemies run into it and either way it's going to do a small explosion damaging anyone that is close to it. When I was playing a around with it, I was trying to see if the orb kind of floats towards an enemy, and it does not. It actually just stays within that same area. So do not wait too long to shoot it or do something with it, because it is going to despawn eventually. And that was only the origin trait. I did notice a couple new perks that have been added in as well, which I'll go over while I'm going through all of these weapons. So first, we have the Hand Cannon Exuvia. This is a 120 RPM aggressive frame, and the perks that you can see that I have are Lone Wolf and Explosive Payload. Lone Wolf is a new perk that slightly improves aim assist, aimed on sight speed, and airborne effectiveness increases these efforts when there is no nearby allies. When I actually tried to hand can it, it definitely felt like a 120, which makes sense. It felt pretty nice and easy to use. However, for some reason, the look of this hand cannon gives me very big like Crota hand cannon vibes. Moving on to Sovereignty, the Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle. My perks on this rifle are No Distraction and Withering Gaze. Withering Gaze, I believe, is a new perk. Aiming this weapon for a short period without firing grants the ability to apply Void Weaken to the next target you damage. Timer resets after firing or exiting the zoom. Honestly, the sniper felt really good. It was definitely one of my top favorites to use while I was using all of these weapons. Just being able to see like the little orb spawn in to just damage nearby enemies was just really fun. However, the Withering Gaze, I did get to try out too much but just being able to apply a weakening shot to an enemy so that your teammates or yourself can do more damage on it I think can be so useful like imagine it in GMs plus you don't even have to wait for any ability regens just to apply weakening because you can have a sniper that does that for you or I don't exactly know which other weapon withering gaze can be found on but I definitely know it's on a sniper next we have the pulse rifle vantage point which is a adaptive frame for the perks, my weapon has Lone Wolf, which we've already gone over, and Jolting Feedback. 
Jolting Feedback is a brand new perk. Dealing repeated damage with this weapon inflicts jolt and while amplified, jolt applies faster. How awesome does that sound? So not only are you doing damage with those Dark Aether orcs, but you're also inflicting jolt whenever you do repeated damage. By the way, out of all of these legendary weapons, this pulse rifle was my top favorite. The second to last one is a precision frame sidearm called Insurmountable with the perks Demolitionist and Closing Time, which Closing Time improves range, accuracy, and handling as the magazine gets lower. Unless the sidearm is a rocket sidearm, I'm usually not the biggest fan of sidearms. I just don't really enjoy using them. However, this is actually one of the first weapons I equipped and I won't lie, I actually liked it. I apologize if I mispronounce any of these names, but the final one is called Liturgy. It is a grenade launcher that double fires, which means it will shoot two rounds that bounces on the ground. As you can see, there's already some pretty solid perks on this weapon. First, disorienting rounds is always good to be able to blind enemies. Secondly, I have Rhyme Stealer and Chain Reaction. Rhyme Stealer, from what I believe, is a brand new perk and defines as destroying a stasis crystal or defeating a frozen enemy with this weapon grants you frost armor. There is a lot of stasis theme in this new update which makes this weapon perk actually very good because frost armor will give you like around a 5% damage resistance and it can be stacked multiple times. Now do not judge me on my gameplay, I actually suck at using these grenade launchers that bounces. After all these years, I still haven't gotten the hang of it, but I will take a double firing grenade launcher any day. The three reprice weapons that are returning are actually from the season of the Splicer. We have Chroma Rush Auto Rifle, Ignition Code Grenade Launcher, and the Sojourner's Tail Shotgun. Now every single weapon that I just went over, the brand new legendary weapons and the repriced weapons that are returning are all going to be enhanceable. Let's move over to the exotics that I have been eager to show you. Bungie dropped a trailer not too long ago to show us a sneak peek of episode 2 and gave us an image of this really cool looking weapon. Well, this is a grenade launcher called Alethanem. Out of all the weapons that I got to use, this was my number one favorite and let me tell you why. This weapon fires a harvester spike projectile. Dealing final blows with this weapon creates a single vestige at the target's location, impaling more powerful combatants with the projectile creates a steady stream of vestiges from the target. The trait, Vestigial Alchemy, the weapon gains energy when picking up those vestiges. Long press reload with at least 50% energy to cause your next projectile to create ammo brick for you and your allies on impact. Special bricks are created at 50% energy, while heavy bricks are created at 100%. So what does all of this mean? Basically, whenever you get a kill with this weapon, an ore pops out which is actually called a vestige. This vestige is going to fly towards you and fill up the meter on the left side of your screen, and whenever it hits 50%, you can decide if you want to make special ammo or wait until it's at 100% to do heavy ammo. You would just long press your reload button and the next kill you get on the enemy is going to drop the ammo. But before you think, wow, this is probably a lot of kills you need to get, it actually is not. Whenever you see a tanky enemy, shoot a bullet at him and your bullet is actually going to do damage over time. And as you can see, look at how many vestiges are popping out of him. So the tankier the enemy, the more vestiges you're going to get that are going to fly to you and bam, your meter is going to be full in no time. Plus, you don't exactly need to stand still either. I was walking all over the place and the vestiges just kept following me wherever I went. I'm not going to lie, when I first used used it, I almost thought it was a scout rifle just because it didn't feel like a grenade launcher. I think this gun can be very useful in a lot of different activities like imagine it in grandmasters and just put shots into like a champion and you'll just get all these vestiges and make heavy for your teammates or you could even do it maybe at a boss from a raid or just somewhere where a lot of ammo is needed 
I think this could be very good. Like I said, this was one of my favorite weapons to use and I think it can be very powerful in a lot of activities where ammo is very important. Something that I did notice when trying to make the special ammo, it ended up coming out as a finder brick. Now I don't know if that's intentional or if it's random, but I just wanted to point that out. While we are on the subject of exotics, let's look over the armor pieces. To my fellow hunters, we are getting a new exotic armor piece, which is a helmet called Mask of Fealty. Make sure to have your withering blades on as your melee because the hits and bounces of your melee create a small stasis crystal and refund a portion of your melee energy. If you use withering blade to shatter crystals or frozen targets, it releases a spread of withering blades, meaning more blades. So when I first saw this, I thought it sounded pretty interesting, so I equipped my withering blades and gave it a try. So as you can see, every hit or bounce that my withering blade did, it spawned an extra stasis crystal. Not only that, but it also gave me a good chunk of melee energy back. The description also said that I can create more blades by hitting a crystal. So this time I am throwing my withering blade at a crystal and it sends out so many more blades into all kinds of directions to hit more enemies. And the same thing happens whenever I throw it at a frozen enemy. You can equip withering blades through your prismatic subclass or even stasis subclass and you can put more mods on your armor to get that melee energy back much faster. Warlocks, you guys are next and you all are getting a exotic chest piece called Rhymecoat Raymond. It Equipping this and your Bleak Watcher turrets are enhanced, with extended range and are surrounded by stasis crystals and a storm. While standing inside the storm, you are granted icicles over time, which activate when you fire your weapons, applying slow to targets they hit. As a hunter main, I am jealous, and I've always been jealous of y'all's turrets. Basically, can be very powerful, and turrets in general are already so good. Here I am just tossing out my turret, and you can see those crystals that are going to surround it, protecting the turret and me when I'm inside. And then as soon as I'm standing inside, there's this little storm thing that is happening, and you just have to be in that vicinity, shoot any enemies, and you will apply slow effects. You don't even have to have a stasis weapon equipped. Titans, you guys are getting exotic legs called Blast Wave Striders. Gain resistance to your explosives. Defeat targets to charge this armor. Once it's charged, slide or deal explosive self damage to rocket jump backwards and blast deadly sharpnel projectiles that spawn stasis crystals on impact. Charge Rocket Grand's Frost Armor. As soon as I put the legs on, on the left side I immediately saw the meter pop up that needs to be filled in order to use them. So here I am getting some kills, and as soon as it's ready I ended up sliding and it shot out all these crystals around me. Now these crystals could freeze enemies or even kill them when they're close enough. Sadly this was the only thing I got to try out but you can also do it by doing explosive self damage which also gives you frost armor. Either way, I did use it quite a bit and it was actually very fun to just shoot out these crystals. What my hunter is wearing right now is the seasonal armor. Now I didn't have the cloak so I can't show that one. I also am not able to show you the one on the warlock and titan but it definitely gives off a blue and green vibe and I'm sure the others do as well. So I don't know the story, but I know that we get to binge play the entire of Act 1 in one sitting and we get to do potion crafting! Which means we're gonna need a lab, we're gonna need ingredients in order to make these potions and Hint, hint, there are artifact mods that will give us even extra stuff depending on which potion we are currently using. So without spoiling too much, this is the page where you can create potions. Hovering over these potions, they will actually give you something that will benefit you inside the activities. Not only that, there is another section that says in all capitalized letters, BOOST. This boost, whenever you have this potion active, will actually boost something on the artifact. And I will be going over the artifact mods later on, so I'm just pointing that out now so you know what I'm talking about. For the potions, you're going to go out to grab some ingredients to come back and create them. Each potion will help you in different ways and they will also have different type of boosts that apply to the artifact mods. When I say there's a bunch of potions, there really are. There's even a separate page 
page where you can apply these potions and you can combine several different ones. As always, there's going to be a seasonal activity and this one is going to be Onslaught, which actually has three new maps, two new defense weapons, and one new enemy type. Yes, we are going to be seeing more PvP maps added into Onslaught. Now, I only know two out of the three maps, but the two that I know are Kel's Grave, which is actually a newer one, and we're going to be seeing Widow's Court. Some of the objectives and the boss areas have been changed as well, and the brand new enemy type that we're getting in Onslaught is... Scorn. For the artillery weapons, one of them is going to be an airstrike. Pick it up and shoot this red laser beam inside the enemy spawn and that will shoot this gigantic laser beam from the sky with explosions to kill them all. When I upgraded it, it gave me three of those airstrikes to use. I was not able to upgrade it any higher than that, so I'm not exactly sure what it offers. Maybe refills, maybe more airstrikes, or maybe the gigantic laser beam of explosions has a bigger radius. The second upgrade that they added in that's new is a self-controlling turret. Yes, you get to actually sit in it and control the turret yourself. You can full-on 360 with these turrets anywhere where the enemies are located. However, it does come with a catch. It is going to be eventually on cooldown depending on how long you're using it. On each of the sides, left and right, you can see the little indicator that shows you once it happens. I had the same situation that I could not upgrade it to level 2 or 3, but what I'm assuming is that the bullets are probably going to get stronger during every upgrade. I have one more thing to go over and those are the artifact mods. At the very beginning of the video, I mentioned that the temperatures are pretty cold and that was a hint that a lot of the things coming out in the next update have to do with stasis. You will probably notice the word boost come up in a lot of these artifact mods and that boost is only active when you've taken the specific potion. In the first column, we have Scout Rifle Anti-Barrier, SMG Overload, Pulse Rifle Unstoppable, Anti-Barrier Shotgun, and Grenade Launcher Overload, but only the primary and special ammos count. For column 2, there is one with Frost. While Frost Armor is active, Stasis Weapons gain increased reload speed and stability. Stasis Swords gain increased guard resistance. Killing Breeze, Rapid Weapon Final Blows grant you a bonus for mobility, and Weapon Final Blows with Dark Aether Reaper Origin trait count as more than one. Enhanced Aether Generator, Dark Aether Harvester Origin trait has a chance to spawn an extra Dark Aether, and weapons with the Dark Aether Reaper Origin trait are overcharged when the modifier is active. Fell the Revenant, deal increased weapon damage to Scorn, and wearing Shade Stalker armor increases the bonus damage. Rapid Impact, dealing damage with a grenade launcher temporarily increases the reload speed of grenade launchers. In column 3, Wind Chill, Rapid Stasis Weapon Precision Hits grant you a stack of frost armor, and Rapid Precision Hits from the weapons with the Dark Aether Reaper Origin trait grant you more stacks of frost armor. Boost, Dealing stasis weapon damage to slow targets has the chance to spawn a stasis shard. Crystalline Converter Gather stasis shards to gain stacks of crystalline converters. Your next powered stasis melee hit creates stasis crystals equal to the number of stacks you have. Boost Stasis weapon final blows after activating your class ability spawns in a stasis shard. Total Carnage After finishing a powerful combatant, gain temporary damage resistance, and while you have two or more Shade Stalker armor pieces equipped, after finishing a powerful combatant, gain increased temporary damage resistance and replenish health. Power from Pain Rapid final blows against weakened enemies grant devour. And the boost is rapidly killing weakened combatants spawn a void breach. Trace evidence, rapid precision hits or rapid final blows on targets affected by jolt or blind will generate ionic traces. The boost is picking up an ionic trace grants an armor charge. In the fourth column, we have Armor of Aramis. While frost armor is active, taking critical damage from combatants causes you to emit a freezing burst. The boost increases radius and strength of this freezing burst. Hail the storm, shattering stasis crystals releases shards of ice that damage and slow targets, boost is shattering frozen targets and stasis crystals deals increased damage. Finisher Wayframe, 
finishers emit a damaging wave that matches the element of your currently equipped super. Boost, while you have Arc, Void, or Stasis super equipped, the blast also applies Blind, Weaken, and Slow respectively. Weak and Clear, using a grenade launcher to damage a boss, damage a champion, or break a combatant shield weakens them. Boost, using a grenade launcher to damage bosses, champions, or break a combatant shield automatically reloads stowed weapons. Grounded, rapid arc weapon precision hits consume an armor charge to blind the target combatant. Boost, blinding a target this way instead emits a blinding burst. Moving on to the final column, brain freeze, frozen combatants become surrounded by chilling fog, which slows combatants that aren't already slowed and weapons with the Dark Aether Reaper Origin perk deal more damage to frozen combatants. Supernova Picking up a Void Breach causes your next source of void damage to create a large weakening pulse. Conductive Cosmic Crystal Your Arc abilities, Void abilities, and weapons with the Dark Aether Reaper Origin perk do bonus damage to targets that are affected by a stasis debuff. Boost Increase bonus damage to combatants affected by stasis debuff. Served cold, picking up a stasis shard grants you class energy and picking up a void breach grants you melee energy. Kinetic impacts, sustained damage with a heavy grenade launcher causes the targets to emit a shockwave that damages nearby targets. This shockwave can stun unstoppable champions. So, that was all the information I was able to share with you. Again, everything that I have shown is subject to change. And a huge thank you to Bungie and the entire team for not only allowing me to play, but also show you an early sneak peek of Act 1, Episode 2, Revenant. And thank you for the continuous amount of support you show every day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. If you ever need or want updates on future Destiny things, Things, make sure you are following Destiny the Game and Destiny 2 Team Twitter accounts. I will either see you in a future video or in another livestream on Twitch. Bye!